What is my most cherished wine memory? Well, there have been many, but I suppose one more recent one stands out, and that's when Kathy and I were sitting on the hill of Hermitage, looking out over the Rhone, uh, real true Shiraz country, and uh, the Northern Rhone at its best. Fantastic day, sitting on La Chapelle, right next to the chapel, um, and uh, calling friends in South Africa saying, we here sitting on the best uh, of the best terroir around in France. I think, you know, what lasting impression would I like to leave on the South African wine industry or, or even on any of my wines? Um, you know, I, I had the privilege when I was uh, working in the lab at UC Davis in California of being able to taste some really old um, South African wine, 1862. And uh, it, was, it was that moment, I think, and I still get those sort of spine-chilling uh, um, feelings. It was at that moment I realized, you know, this was history. There was so much that went into making a wine like this that um, uh, when I look back on our own wines and we go through vertical tastings, this year being our 21st year, um, you know, you want to be able to say, I left a legend, mm. uh, but I've done it in a responsible way. I've, uh, I've really looked after the environment but I've left something that people can taste 50, 100 years down the line, and they'll say, gee, that was a great wine. If I wasn't in wine, what would I be doing? Well, you can see my hands, look at the rocks around us. Uh, I was a geologist in my previous life, so I've already, I've already had that other life. But um, I suppose in, in, in many ways, um, what I'm doing now is really what I've always loved to do, uh, grow grapes and make great wines. If I could be a car, any car, what would I want to be? You know, I think it would be quite pretentious to come up with the most, the most uh, powerful car with the, uh, the sportiest red, uh, the blonde at the side, um, etc. I think, in fact, what I'd like to be is a really classic Land Rover. You've got that, you've got all the power that you need. You've got the four-wheel drive. You're close to the ground. I mean, our whole mantra is a synergy between soil and soul, and uh, and you outdoors. Um, you know, even steering a Land Rover is uh, is a kind of work of art. Um, you know, changing course uh, is is amazing, and I think it's one of those kind of vehicles that uh, will take you places that no other vehicle can take you. It's reliable. Uh, it's classic, and uh, and and I think above all, it's uh, it's something that's timeless and so too with our wines. My fam favorite memory with Gary is, um, I remember when we, you know, both of us had previous careers and then we went to California where we studied for two years um, winemaking and then also worked together. And on our return trip to pu put all our experience and our, our knowledge into sort of in into perspective, we visited France and we went to um, Chateau Margaux where we met up with Paul Pontellier and we, the most exciting thing was actually tasting with him from barrel the different vintages of Margaux. So that, I, I think in a way it sort of started our career and our excitement of what we were going to be doing on return to South Africa. If, what would Gary excel at if he wasn't in wine? Um, whenever we have an argument he usually wins. He's, he speaks very well, so I would say he'd be in law. He'd have to be a lawyer or something, something in that in that field, definitely. Hi, we're here with Dampy Bailey, and Dampy, we're honouring Gary Jordan today. Uh, what are your particular memories of Gary Jordan, and what do you think he's contributed to the wine industry? Well, I followed uh, Gary's uh, career for a long time. I met them first when they still used to deliver their grapes to Yesterfi Cellar, which is just next door to me here, and I got to know his parents very well, and then Gary, and eventually Gary wanted to go and study further, and uh, he was then married to, to Kathy, and uh, I was impressed by Gary's uh, his enthusiasm and everything about the wine industry, so I arranged for him to go to Davis, because I'd been to Davis and I knew all the professors. So I managed to, I don't like to use the words, but I smuggled him in. But no, he got in there on his merits, but, but I always like to kid him that I smuggled him into Davis. And since then, I mean, what he's contributed, uh, especially to, to Chardonnay and, and other wines, has is, is, is been tremendous for our industry.